uh, we always thought that yes, I need Jesus, but Jesus alone is not enough. I need Jesus plus power, significance, comfort, approval, and other things. Jesus alone is not enough, is it? Really? But Jesus plus other things is not really trust. Is not really wholehearted worship. God wants us to trust Him completely. Dear beloved friends, welcome to lesson three of Into Christ Likeness. I trust that you already uh, did the workbook before you watch this teaching video. And without further ado, let us pray. Father in heaven, help us today open our eyes and open our ears to be able to see uh, the idols that we worship in our hearts because our hearts is very deceitful and with our own ability, we cannot see it. We need your ministry, Holy Spirit, to convict us, to open our eyes, to make us realize what is it that we are really worshiping. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So part of brokenness is idolatry. It is the, the idols of the heart that we worship instead of worshiping God. So lesson three is about idols of the heart. And the goal for this lesson is that for some of you who uh, never know this topic before is to find out what is it that you are really worshiping in our hearts. We say with our mouth that we worship God, but is it truly, really? Let's study it together. So part of brokenness is that we want to worship ourselves. We don't want to worship God. God created us as a worshipful being, but we reject it. Just like Adam and Eve rejected worshiping God and they chose to disobey God. Just like us, we chose to disobey God with worshiping other things. So what is uh, idolatry? What is idol worship? It is actually self-worship instead of worshiping God. Remember Satan's strategy from lesson one? He always create lies. He always feed lies. And he knows what are we weak on? What, is the, what temptation will work on us? He knows that Eve actually wants personal happiness. So that's why that is what he is feeding to Eve. If you eat this fruit, you will be like God. You will become wise. And Eve decided that I want this happiness and I want to get it my way even though I have to disobey God. And the same thing with us. So behind all this idol worship, there is involvement of temptation from the enemy, from Satan, that we need to realize that, although we cannot blame Satan again, because it is our decision, it is our choice, right? So actually, the bottom line is um, idolatry, idols of the heart is self-worship. And how is it... Uh, happening? How is it um, we can see signs of it in, the in our daily lives, right? And I'm going to uh, read the slides and pay attention. Um, some that children and their achievement is sometimes what we are looking for, right? Person our personal happiness is depending on that. We will be happy when we are successful in our career, when we have lots of money, when we have godly husband, when we have ca house, cars, investment, jewelries, when we are beautiful and attractive, when we have position and fame, and ministry. Ministry, when we crave for recognition, power, and significance, ministry can give us that. High education, and nowadays, probably health since the pandemic, right? So if you see all this, this is our, the normal desires, right? Is it wrong to want our children to be successful? It's not wrong. Is it wrong that if we want a godly husband to choose God, praying for a godly husband? It's not wrong at all. But when this desire is becoming uh, so big and consuming us that we are willing to disobey God to get this my way, I don't want to follow God. I want to get this, my personal happiness. Then it becomes sin. Remember from lesson one that human distrust God. It is very difficult even for believers to trust God, right? When we trust God, 
I think we will stop sinning. But the problem is we don't trust God and we want things our way. I want this. I want this. And I need to fight it for myself. Nobody loves me more than myself. That's why I need to get it myself. And how do we get it? It is true. Power, significance, control, comfort, and approval. And what actually, bottom line, what human beings are yearning is security and identity, right? And security and identity can be found in Christ alone. But because we don't trust God, we use power, significance, control, comfort, and approval to give us security and identity. And that is self-worship. But for sure, when we worship other things, when we don't worship God, the end result is just emptiness and it's just dryness. And at the end of our life, we'll realize all this is meaningless and we'll regret that. It's just like the analogy that I can give is that um, idolatry, worshiping other things is like uh, drinking uh, salt water. Right? The more you drink, the more you become thirsty. That water will not be able to satisfy us. Why? Because God created us with a hole that only fit with himself. Only by worshiping God alone that we will find satisfaction. And idolatry or self-worship is very dangerous. Why? We see in this chart that when we are redeemed, that's the cross, right? Our salvation. And after our salvation, the rest of our life until we die, it is sanctification process that we are being transformed to become more like Christ. But when we worship self, then the transformation process is stopped. We cannot become more like Christ when we worship ourselves. How can we become more like Christ? Christ is not worshiping self. Christ is worshiping his Father in heaven. So it is a problem, right? And the topic for this year's study is to become more like Christ. So idolatry, self-worship is a huge problem. We will not grow to become more like Christ. And I would like to bring up Jeremiah 17, verse 9 and 10. Let me read it. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Verse 10, I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. Verse 9 said, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Isn't it true that our hearts is very, very deceitful? And I want to explain uh, when the Bible talks about heart, it doesn't mean a uh, heart like a cardio or our emotion only, okay? Um, look at this uh, picture of heart. The meaning of the word heart in the Bible, it includes the mind, emotion, and will. What are included in the mind? Um, the mind includes thoughts, beliefs, understanding, memory, judgment, discernments, the conscience. Emotion includes longings, desires, feelings, imagination, affections, and will is the something in our heart that chooses and determines our action. So usually, Satan comes in, tempt us through what? Through our desires, right? That, look at this. You Don't you want this? You know, you need to grab it on yourself. Do not wait upon God because God will not give it to you. If you wait upon God, upon God, then you will miss out on so many things. And our everything, our mind and our emotion and our will can work together to deceive ourselves, right? That idolatry is, is sometimes is, is very... Um, subconscious and we don't realize it unless the Holy Spirit bring it to our attention we can be blind and also the um, deceitfulness of the heart is that we can justify what we want we can change our understanding and our conviction from what is wrong 
to become what is right. Because we really, really, really want this thing. And we can justify it. Our scheme of the heart is very deceitful. That we can justify it and we can convince ourselves to change what is wrong to become what is right. And we continue living that way, believing what is wrong to become right. And that is how deceitful the heart is. And what is the biblical solution then? What is the solution? Well, right right now, for believers, uh, we always thought that, yes, I need Jesus. But Jesus alone is not enough. I need Jesus plus power, significance, comfort, approval, and other things. Jesus alone is not enough, is it? Really? But Jesus plus other things is not really trust, is not really wholehearted worship. God wants us to trust Him completely. God wants us to find our security and identity in Him alone and not from other things, not from our surroundings, our achievement, our family members, and our status and our education. Not that, but in Him alone. Why? Because He is a good God. He knows that in the end, if we worship those things, when those things are fading away or taken away, in the end, it's emptiness, meaningless, fruitful life, and we are not growing to become more like Christ. So I, I would like to give you this x-ray questions to ask yourself this question. For some of you who uh, think that this concept is very new to you, and you don't know actually, what is it? What is my idol? What is it that I am worshiping? Um, probably these questions can help you figure that, out, figure that out and point out. The first one, right now, what would happen for you to be happy? Right? What is it that needs to happen for you to be happy? Number two, if you could change your situation in any way, how would you want it changed? I guess for, for the answers for the first two questions will tell you what do you actually want? What do you actually worship? What desires is so strong in you that consuming you? The third one, what do you think about more than anything else? Number four, what would it take for you to consider yourself to be a really successful person? The last one. What do you most want to accomplish at the end of your life? Take time, journal it, take these questions and answer it. Uh, the questions that I put in the workbook, it's more um, to ask yourself in the situation of conflict, right? Sometimes we can find what are we worshiping in the situation of conflict. We got into conflict because we're angry, because we don't get what we want. That's why there's a conflict. These questions is more to ask you when there's no conflict. <laughs> um, ask this question. What is your answer? And sometimes you don't find it right away. It takes, takes weeks and then you record things, highlights in your life. And then probably over a period of time, you will figure it out. What is it that you are worshipping? It could be all the root idols, right? There are five. And in different situations, different idols will be servicing more. And in different situations, another um, idol will be more uh, servicing more. And after answer, after going through these questions, X-ray questions, another thing that I would like to suggest is to pray this prayer from Psalm 139, verse 23 to 24. Let me read it. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So in your prayer, ask God to search your heart, to test you because the heart is deceitful, right? We will not know unless the Holy Spirit put the light, like a flashlight in that corner. Ah, we see it. That is the work of the Holy Spirit in us. 
With our own blindness, we will not be able to locate it. Why? Because our heart is so sinful and we are so broken and we are blind. Or another thing, if you are brave, ask the person closest to you, your family members or close friends who work together with you, who knows you very well. Probably they know our blind spot that we don't know, but they know, but they're too scared to tell you um, but if you ask, if you're willing to humble yourself, you can ask and be courageous to listen to the input from others that knows us well. So the solution and principle to remember for this lesson is that, number one, idolatry is self-worship. It is sin because we are supposed to worship God alone. Number two, idolatry will lead us to emptiness and unfruitful life. We cannot grow into Christ's likeness. Number three, the longing for security and identity will be fulfilled in Christ alone. So idolatry will lead us to emptiness and a meaningless life. But worshiping God will give us um, joy and will give us the fulfillment that nothing else can give us. And remember that our security and identity can be found in Christ alone. That we will talk about this in lesson five, our identity in Christ. And for the application, um, again, application is like meditating, and you can share this in your uh, the friends in your groups. Um, number one, what idols are you worshiping? Do you know? Self awareness is already half of the solution. Number two. What do you plan to do about it? Now that you know what is your idol um, in situation, it could be a, a person can have more than one idol. It could be all, right? For me, it's all. And in this different situation, uh, control, for example, services. And then in other situation, approval of people, uh, service. So journal it events that kind of like bothering you to know, oh, in this situation, yeah, I, I, I tend to be controlling. In this situation, I want comfort. I don't want to sacrifice for people because I worship comfort. So we are growing. Don't be discouraged when you find out your, your idols. All of us are still in the process. It takes time uh, to become more like Christ. So it's okay. The beginning of knowing your idols is beginning of the solution. Um, so I hope this study is beneficial for you. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, that um, you reveal to us the idols of our heart, the sinfulness of our hearts, but yet you still extend grace. You give us the gift of the Holy Spirit to continue to um, put light in the corner of our hearts that is so dark and sometimes we don't realize that we are worshiping ourselves we are worshiping something else we are seeking security and identity in something else help us Holy Spirit to slowly um, wanting to trust God wholeheartedly wanting to trust Christ and slowly replacing these idols with worshiping you alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So thank you, friends, for being with me. So I hope to see you again next week.